Coming up right now, a yoga class gets mistaken for a murder scene, giving new meaning to downward facing dog. Also coming up, a woman goes on a manhunt in Manhattan after she strikes out on dating apps. We're going to tell you how it all turns out. And later, the details on a grandmother forced to tear down her house. We've got your trending news and entertainment starting right now on Daily Flash. Get ready for trending news and entertainment. This is Daily Flash with your host, Andrea Jackson and Mitch English. The fun starts right now. This is Daily Flash. Hey everyone, I'm Andrea Jackson. And I am Mitch English, welcoming you to Daily Flash. We've got an hour packed with some mm -hmm. fun, fun stuff here. And uh, we all know that uh, some are saying the time to sell and time to buy right now when it comes to houses, uh, depending on where you're at. Yeah. If you're going to buy, if you're going to sell, there is a house for sale. I wanted to know, wanted to know if you would actually consider purchasing it. It's okay. In, it's in Pasadena, California. Love so Pasadena. Already. It's uh, a four-bedroom home, beautiful home, uh, kind of uh, mid-century, uh, not mid-century, early-century uh, two-story house. And it's got a, a four bedrooms, a beautiful avocado tree, Ooh. but it was also the house uh, where they shot Halloween. Oh. The original oh. and the, even up the 2021 sequel were in that four uh, firefighters get killed in it. It's up for sale right now, the actual house. Really? $1.8 million is what they are uh, asking for it. And if you remember that one, that she, you know, Lori Stroud is up there in the window and she looks down and sees Jason all the time. Yes. You know, they apparently have broken it down into apartments right now. Oh, so really? there's like four different apartments here. Would you would you buy a, ho a, a, a Hollywood house? Now, no, it's not the act. I mean, nothing really happened in. It, but it was just right. House. Um, I, it would be interesting. I know I saw a story about the Brady Bunch house, Brady Bunch, yeah. and it was for sale, but it didn't go for as much as they were and asking. Dropped the price yeah, in big time. Um, I guess it would depend. I know that the the stoop in New York where um, they shot the Sex in the City uh -huh. opens, they had to put a chain up to block people from taking Try pictures to... there because people actually live at this place and they just use it as a front. It wasn't the actual apartment. And I think the Brady Bunch house was yeah, the same, same reason. Thing. They would have yes. problems. They had so many people come by. They're like, look, if you buy this house, people are going to be coming by here all yeah. the time. Uh, what, is there a Hollywood house you'd ever buy? There's a couple Hollywood houses um, that were featured in some of the classic movies. Um, yeah, that are like the mid-century modern houses that I, you know, I love. <laughs> That's an old gym, gym. Yeah. I, I think I would want the Breaking Bad house, and I would just go <gasps> and, and I would look because first off, it's not going to be that expensive because it's That's just in true. a regular neighborhood. But I, I would still check the walls to see if maybe somebody might have put money in there because Walter cash. White had so much money he didn't know where to everywhere. put it. Everywhere. Right, in the basement, everywhere. Right. Another situation where something possibly could have gone really, really bad, but it didn't turn out that way. Police swarmed a community space in Britain where some local dog walkers mistook a group meditation exercise for a ritual <laughs> mass murder scene. The Seascape Cafe detailed the unusual incident in a Facebook post saying that they're happy to report everybody is safe. These are stock photos, by the way. <laughs> that, that, she does look dead, she though, She does, right? yes. They believe the call was made in good intentions. Here's what happened. The yoga teacher wrote in her Unity Yoga page that uh, police were called because some dog walkers went by. They thought well, some of the classroom poses looked like a crime scene. Okay. Class had already ended by the time the Bobby showed up at the building. The, the Bobbies. Do they still call them that? I there? think they do. Uh, I yeah. just wanted to kind of nice. uh, act like I knew what I'm talking about. Police representative uh, confirmed that the officers were called. Turned out to be a misunderstanding. I said good for them, but also, come on, maybe examine a little bit more before you call the, the police. Did, did the sign not say yoga on the outside? Did it say yoga? As well, uh, it was a cafe, so. Yeah. I mean, the, I know they, they see something, say something. And yeah. so, you know, you can't fault them for being concerned, but it does seem like Outrageous. They do mind the gap over there. They do mind the gap. Maybe That's the true. see something, say something hasn't really uh, <laughs> kind of picked up too much of it. A 29 year old beauty influencer, Carolina Geitz, uh, who's been single for two years, grew tired of the romance rat race, so she decided to make a sign saying looking for a husband while walking around New York City to see if it would attract any interest. Geitz hit the streets with her cardboard billboard after months of online dating failures. Rather than give up hope, the wannabe bride decided to try and make a personal connection with the help of a higher power. The native of South Asia, who relocated to the U.S. in 2017, reeled in more than 8 million views featuring her husband hunt. In the trending clip, uh, Geitz is seen strutting around, waving her handwritten poster in the air, trusting that a dream lover, a handsome hunk with a beautiful soul, will miraculously <laughs> appear. And she claims it worked. It took her just 30 minutes, 
of parading the city streets before she met a man. So far, no word on his identity. She says she's choosing to keep his details private for now. I like how you, at the top of the show, you said about the Manhattan. Manhattan. Uh, reminds me of coming to America. They went, you know, Akeem wanted to find a queen, so yeah. we went to Queens, Queens New York. <laughs> so if you're looking for a man, you go to Manhattan. Exactly. Right? I love of course that you idea. do. And, and good for her. She wanted something. Yeah. She advertised it, and she, that's her intention. So if you go, well, I'm just not the marrying type, and you date this girl, yes. then it's on you, because she says, I'm looking for a husband. Uh, bingo, yeah. So she's, you know what it is. She's not hiding anything. She looks gorgeous. And she's a gorgeous she, yeah. she seems like she's smart. She's got it together. Uh, and she got tired of the online dating rat race, so she decided, hey, maybe I should meet someone in person. Yeah. What and a novel idea. Yeah, saves you a lot of stress and headache. And you see yeah. them, and you know they're right when you see yeah, them. Exactly. So I love it. Well, a Florida grandmother is being forced to tear down her treehouse in Miami. She's lived in for about 17 years after she racked up $40,000 in fines for unsafe construction. Aww. Since 2015, a 72-year-old Shawnee Chasser has had neighbors report her property for code enforcement. Once county reps confirmed her treehouse was not safe to live in, they gave her two options, take it down or bring it up to code. She has decided to stop fighting and will start the process of tearing it down, but she says living indoors is not an option for her. Chaser claims she will build her next outdoor home up to code with the proper permits. The grandmother has always lived outdoors and says she has to hear the rain and the wind at night, saying she's claustrophobic. She also shares her outdoor home with a pet rat <laughs> well, you have to. I mean, if you live in a tree, you gotta. I'm sure it's more than one pet. There's racking. more. Uh, she, you know what, man? She, it looked nice from what I saw. Yeah. It's unfortunate that she has to tear it down. As um, and some people, you know, different strokes for different folks. Yeah. So they're gonna do that. Uh, there's reasons why those codes are there, um, I suppose. But it, you know, it goes to a lot of people's arguments. Like this is private property. Why do you care what's coming in? Why I'm if I'm living up here? I don't know. I don't. Really, yeah. I, I, I can understand it. If it causes a danger for somebody else or, or whatever, but I don't know where, where that would lie. It's Miami and South Florida. Hurricanes hit our That's a good point. state, yeah. so part of it is probably rationale, right? But you can appreciate the fact that she likes to live outdoors. I mean, who's to say somebody living in a tent in a, you know, in a campground happy, isn't, right. uh, you know, in the same kind of predicament when it comes to weather, right? If you think, yeah, like RVs. I mean, yeah. if a hurricane came through and you're in an RV, right? it's, it's not going to be a great situation to be in. Either, so. Yeah. I, I but kudos to her. It looks great. I would if you want to come up here and build a treehouse for my kid. I would I would hire this woman any day. Of the she week. might have a, a career that she never really anticipated. So. Treehouse design. There is a whole <laughs> sh show I think on HGTV or something like that oh, where guys he goes around and makes tree for houses. Oh. I, I mean, unbelievable treehouses. I tree bet they houses. are. Like, like hundreds of thousands. Are they dollars. up to code? Did he get permits? I don't know. That's the next episode. <laughs> we'll find out. A Canadian chef uh, known for his knife skills actually broke a world record by chopping 166 slices. Uh, in 30 seconds while wearing a blindfold. Uh, his name is Wallace Wong. He's a chef and bodybuilder known as the Six Pack Chef on TikTok. Put his chopping skills to the t oh my goodness. Holy cow. Uh, for an episode of the Guinness World Records Italian TV edition, Wong donned a blindfold and chopped some long strips of cucumber into 166 thin slices Damn within 30 Lord. seconds. Wong said surviving a bout with cancer at age 17 inspired him to <laughs> overcome obesity and set goals for his bodybuilding uh, and cooking career. So he here at Daily Flash but want to see. We have to make, look at his finger though. He has a band-aid on his oh, finger. So keep true. that in mind. I'm that's sorry. True. We want to see uh, if we can blindfold two of our producers and yes. see who can chop the most cucumber slices in 30, 30 seconds. seconds. We got Matt and James, James our competitors welcome. here. Uh, you guys both have your blindfolds yes. uh, taken. Oh, uh, Matt, where's your cucumber? Where, where there we go. go. There you go. Matt keeps his cucumber in his pocket, uh, always ready to go. Uh, gentlemen, this can you see anything? So the, the rules are how many, we do not want you to hurt yourself, how many slices yeah. you can cut in 30 seconds. Oh, geez, James. Uh, <laughs> James, you don't have to do TV <laughs> Wonder when you do it, all right? Isn't she lovely? I love, James took off his glasses to make it like, <laughs> That's a good idea. All right, so we're going to see how many is the rule, uh, how many they can do, yeah. or uh, how, how well they look. Uh, right, you and guys and do you have your, your fingers in the, we don't want anybody to get cut here. Yes, or make hurt. sure. Okay. Here we go. On five, four, three, two, two. one, go. All right, Maddie, keep going. We got one. All right. You're, they're a little thick. Ooh, Maybe you can go a little bit. Keep on going. The, on the oh, money. I'm, I'm, uh, oh yeah. Keep going. Uh, yeah. Keep those right. fingers. Uh, yeah. Curl the yeah. end. You got 20 seconds left. All right, you're getting toward the end. Look at Wow. Holy 15 seconds, 15 seconds. Oh, very Holy good. Oh, God. James is going for the triple cut. Oh, my goodness. Yes, Down we go. the middle. James, Alex, watering it. Three, two, one. Woo! Yes, Look at this. Uh, James, 
overachiever. Okay. okay, now I can't say this. Yours are still sticking together a little bit. Oh, right? oh they're coming oh, apart, buddy. They're coming apart, buddy. They're coming apart. Look at that. That's horrible. They're coming apart, buddy. Look, they're all still here, too. So This is me. This is called being a sous chef for my grandfather, for my mom. That's what I mean. James is our winner. James is our winner. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You can keep the cucumber up, Matt. We're back. Don't worry about that. Right after this. Welcome back to Daily Flash. A major shakeup is happening in the music world that could change the way artists get paid for streaming their work. If you think there's a lot of money for streams, take a look at these numbers. For an artist like Rihanna to make $2 million off streaming her music on sites like Spotify, a song must be streamed more than 500 million times. Each time a song is streamed, she makes less than a half of a half of a half of a cent. Joining us to talk about a change in streaming income is media mogul and managing director of Strat America's Seth Schachter. Seth, welcome to Daily Flash. Great to be here. Good morning. Talk to me, Seth. How is the streaming industry being shaken up? So this is this has been a tough situation for quite some time. Just what we call artist compensation, basically the back end, the royalty pool. And um, you know, I was pretty involved with this setting this up for Sony Music many many years ago. And, I don't think we anticipated now that there'd be so much music available, that there'd be so many ways to get your music up on Spotify. So what's happened over the last decade or so is just that, yeah, to your point with Rihanna and many other artists, uh, it's a little tiny fraction of a penny of a stream. It's calculated against a big pie that includes everything from, from her to Tchaikovsky, basically. And I think um, the biggest music label in the world now, Universal, has got something that's called an artist-centric model. And the idea is to um, not only change artist compensation for the better, but to kind of fight back against kind of everything from white noise to all this crazy AI music that's out there. You can literally put the sound of a, uh, you know, a washing machine up on Spotify and it gets the same stream as it does a Michael Jackson track. So <laughs> there's some pretty absurd things that need to be need to be changed. And at a top level, that's sort of what this is all about. And what does this mean for lesser known artists? Because really they're they're the ones struggling to try and get some slice of the pie, as you had mentioned, some slice of the spotlight. Yeah. So no one's going to be happy with any of this, right? There's going to be people that are, you know, going to have issues on both sides. I mean, what, what Universal is doing, and they're doing it with um, kind of a small, more so European focused streaming service called Deezer that, that I would say, in my opinion, they probably have a little bit of a closer relationship with because they're both have a lot of roots in France and Europe, basically. But the idea is to weight streams um, from artists that I believe would have more than just a thousand plays, um, you know, if you will, more than just any other stream. So, so it'll be it'll be two times more than the washing machine, the, the sound. <laughs> but um, if 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 someone I believe actually actively seeks out something, so they literally pull out whether it's an old you know Tom Petty track or you know a brand new track from the weekend. I believe that's going to get a weighting of four times. So the idea is to kind of emphasize stuff that's real and, you know, and also sort of promoting, promoting developing artists as discovering artists as well, as opposed to kind of all the white noise that's on the service. And I think it's, I think it's a reasonably positive step. And, um, you know, and this is a small service dealer. This is just a couple of percentage points in the market. So at some point they'll take this to the big gorilla, you know, to Spotify and try and do the same thing. For someone like Rihanna, how does this increase her digital footprint even more? Well, so the thing is, the stuff that's never in the press is, you know, every artist has got their own little different deal, their own big deal, their own individual set of circumstances. So, you know, I'm not going to name specific artists, but just say you're an artist that took a, a big whopping advance check, whether it's to make an album or help you with marketing or make a video from your record label, you're going to have to earn that back. So. Um, with those numbers you just showed at the top of this conversation, you may not ever earn it back, or it may, may take a long time. But um, in in theory, I think it should boost the streaming income, um, you know, for, for all the artists that are above a thousand streams for sure, yeah. And so far this is happening in France. What do you think the chances are that the U.S. will adopt it here? Well, I think they're going to do it wherever Deezer is, and that's a really good question. But I think I think what, what Universal's trying to do um, there, there's a whole set of, uh, you know, challenges they and all the other rights holders are facing right now. And streaming income is definitely a big, big consideration. So I expect they'll try and do this with, you know, everyone from, from 
Amazon to Spotify to Apple Music to YouTube to all, to all the others over time. And uh, I think I think that'll be a positive thing. I think you know the other stuff that's happening, a little bit off topic, but there's just been this explosion of, of kind of AI oriented music as well. And just you know, you can randomly put anything up on Spotify or some of these services. So I think part of the idea is to kind of get that stuff cleaned up um, and pushed down because I I don't know if that helps anyone if if you're waiting a Radiohead song right the same amount uh as you are just white noise so i think that needs to get fixed basically and i expect that'll happen across sort of the whole music streaming ecosystem and, and let me get your take on that because right now artificial artificial intelligence is the big focus of the the writers and the actors strike and the producer strike what are the sources of concern for artists i mean you've mentioned a number of them but clearly this is affecting all across the board when it comes to performance arts yeah, you know, it's interesting. Uh, I've been at a number of events recently um, around the music industry conferences and and I think I think I can sort of speak a little bit collectively. It's it's very early for music with AI. And um, I don't know, I mean it, it's certainly a threat um, you know, for on some levels if if you think about all the fake break tracks, the weekend tracks, the things that have been out there. Um, but there's actually a lot of positive stuff around AI that is quiet under the radar that producers, songwriters, engineers, everyone in the studio uses, and it, it helps people in different ways. So it's a mixed set of circumstances. I mean, there's clearly apprehension. I, I don't get the same sense it's as hot in, in say, music as it is in, in, in Hollywood and TV right now. Um, I'm also still a believer that robots and robotic music aren't gonna replace our best artists. So I think the temperature is a little bit, you know, cooler than, than sort of the Hollywood situation, but, um, you know, these industries need sort of some type of copyright law or legislative uh, solution in DC to happen because um, I think it's going to be very hard to move forward unless someone says, look, um, you know, has a clear position around copyrights and AI, which isn't the case right now. Yeah, it's definitely a longer conversation. Seth, great to chat with you. Uh, how can people find you on social media? Well, you can get me on LinkedIn, it's just Seth Shackner, or I'm also at www.stratamericas.com and all the other platforms as well. Happy to connect. Seth, thank you so much for more information on the shakeup in the music industry. Head to our website, dailyflashshow.com. Welcome back to Daily Flash. I'm Mitch English. Listen, I'm sure you've seen all the signs and you're probably wondering, are gas prices ever going to drop? Well, in today's Car Smarts, Lauren Fix, the car coach, has the answer, well, that no one wants to actually hear. Could gas prices get any higher? Yes, they can, and it's expected that gas and diesel prices will continue to increase. Federal officials are looking for ways to reduce the pain at the pump as gas and diesel prices continue to soar. As Americans get ready for road trips, not just for Labor Day, but throughout the whole year, all drivers need some relief at the pump because everything is getting more expensive. Congress is looking at a three-month pause on its federal gasoline and diesel taxes, but that doesn't seem likely. The 18.4 cent federal gas tax, which helps fund infrastructure work, could be dropped if Congress voted to approve that. Congressmen on both sides of the aisle are not likely to agree and reject the White House effort to suspend the federal gasoline tax. Now, drivers once again are feeling this pinch like we had last year and the year before when fueling their vehicles, with the average price of a gallon of regular gasoline in the U.S. jumping from $3.83 to $4.60, depending on what grade. That's up nearly 30 cents from a month ago. And diesel, its average is $4.36. Again, that's up as well. Even though prices are climbing everywhere, the steepest increases are in the Midwest states, which have seen their average gas prices rise between 18 cents and to 25 cents, according to AAA. To be clear, gas prices today are nowhere near the high they were in June of 2022. And when they reach a record high of $4.62 a gallon, that's when we got a real problem. Typically, when gas prices increase, the main culprit is the cost of oil. And this month, however, oil prices are only part of the story. And here are three reasons gasoline prices are going up. High temperatures. We're all seeing high temperatures. And July was one of the hottest months on record for many parts of the nation, including Arizona, Texas, New Mexico, and even Michigan had some very high temperatures. 
Phoenix, for example, had a record-breaking 31 straight days at 110 degrees during the day. Such high temperatures meant oil refineries had to reduce their output, as many of them could only operate at temperatures between 32 and 95 degrees. And the reduced output sent gas prices higher, and this is all according to Andrew Gross of AAA. Rising oil prices and crude oil prices have recently hovered around $80 a barrel. That's up from $70 a barrel just a month ago. And when global oil prices climb, gas prices typically follow suit. Oil prices are climbing in part because Russia, the world's third biggest oil producer, decided last month to cut production starting in August. And yes, we're still getting oil from Russia, but OPEC has also decided to reduce oil production. It's important to note that analysts at investment bank USB expect crude oil prices to increase 85 to $90 a barrel in the coming months amidst rising oil demand. This is going to make prices at the pump much higher for everybody. Falling oil production from Saudi Arabia, the second largest oil producer, also cut its oil exports last month, and we are still getting oil from them, and it slashed production by 1 million barrels per day, hoping to keep oil prices elevated because they make more money that way. What this really means is higher gas prices for us until we decide to drill more oil here and become energy independent like we had in the past. Now, even if you don't own a gasoline powered vehicle, you're going to pay the price as goods are constantly being transported by gasoline and diesel powered vehicles. That means everything's about to get more expensive. Make sure to check your budget. I'm Lauren Fix, and you can find this information on my website, carcoachreports.com and dailyflashshow.com. Lauren, thank you. Follows on approach, and after a summer of heat and styling damage, it's time to get our hair back in healthy shape. Here to help us say I do to a new do is celebrity hairstylist and styling expert for Sally Beauty, Gregory Patterson. Hi, Gregory. Thanks for having me. This summer, we've all put our hair through the ringer with heat styling, ocean and pool water, sun damage, you name it but it's time for a change. And to get there, we have to start with a true healthy base. So whether you're looking for the season's latest runway styles or looking to go bold to enter a new era, you wanna be sure your hair is in its healthiest form. Repair and replenish your hair from the season's changes with Bombar, an award-winning affordable hair care line that rebuilds broken bonds for happier, healthier hair. Bombar's core repair system for all hair types has results in just one use. It protects, repairs, and hydrates hair. The line just launched some new additional care products, including Bombar's Bonding Detangling Spray, Bonding Leave-In Conditioner, Bonding Curl Cream, and first to market, Bonding Blue Shampoo. On and off the runway, it's all about fabulous, rich and nourished colors this season. The Bombar Collection, after thousands of rave reviews of their initial launch, just released 30 shades of permanent hair color that delivers bonding technology to strengthen, condition, repair hair fibers, and reinforce bonds while giving you 100% gray coverage. With a healthy hair base, you'll be able to create and maintain your next shade with ease and confidence that you're addressing frizz, dryness, and more without breaking the bank or your hair. Head on over to your local Sally Beauty or sallybeauty.com to check out all of the latest Bombar offerings and styling essentials and keeping your hair healthy and replenished this fall. This is Daily Flash with your host, Andrea Jackson and Mitch English, trending news and entertainment. This is Daily Flash. Hi, everybody. I am Mitch English. I'm Andrea Jackson. This is Daily Flash, your source for trending news and entertainment. So, Mitch, i got to ask you, do you ever use those food delivery services? Uh, I, not as much as I used to. Like, when I was single, I, I did a lot, but uh, not so much. But uh, when, when Liza's out of town, I will. Story making headlines today out of Miami, Florida. A son and his mom ordered some DoorDash. The guy shows up at their house, $30 bill. They left a $3 tip. Uh -huh. They have one of the ring cameras, right? Uh, they see him drop the bag of food on the doorstep. He takes a picture of the food, then he steps back. He spits on the food three times and then mumbles something underneath his breath, all caught on camera, and then the DoorDash driver takes off. You know, uh, see, that's why I worry. Well, a $3 tip is the reason why I'm certain. That's what the right? son and his mom are assuming, yeah. I mean, a 10% tip uh, on that. And, you know, uh, <laughs> Listen, you're talking about people's food, first off. I mean, what, yeah. I mean, that's a, I mean, that's a, 
you can go to jail for you, something. You can, that yes. And they got it on camera. And nowadays, everything is on camera, camera everywhere, yeah. no matter what. And I can understand I, uh, uh, your frustration. But guess what? Your next one, you might have got $12 tip. It all evens out in the wash. That's a great point. Yeah. So the guy initially, the teen, initially contacted DoorDash, and they didn't respond. And then he finally got a hold of somebody in customer service and has told him that that DoorDash driver has been fired. He well, should be. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think uh, there should be some type of uh, uh, criminal. Uh, there, they, and there it. could be. Yeah, you never know. I think they should. Absolutely so. Police no. formed a community space in Britain when some local dog walkers mistook a group meditation exercise for a ritual mass murder scene. <laughs> Not sure how you confuse yeah, the how two. How do you go from there to there? Okay. Uh, the Seascape Cafe detailed the unusual incident in a Facebook post saying they're happy to report everyone was safe and well. And of course, this is stock footage stock here footage, you're, you're yeah. seeing. Uh, and uh, they believe the call was made with good intentions. The yoga teacher wrote on her Unity Yoga Facebook page that the police were called when some local dog walkers mistook classroom poses from what looked like a crime scene. Oh my gosh. The class had already ended by the time police arrived at the building. A police rep confirmed officers were called to the building for what turned out to be a big misunderstanding. You know, I um, started going to these uh, sound baths. You know what those are? No. Yeah, it was they make a noise and everybody, you lay down and they make noise okay. and, and the guy talks and he kind of, and it's actually very relaxing. The problem with that is that I get too relaxed, and I, 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 and then I'm like, I can't get relaxed because I know what happens when I get too relaxed and I fall asleep. You know where I'm yes, at? Yes, I know where you're. <laughs> so now in this situation, that's why I stay away from yoga because there's poses, man. That uh, what would the, when you look like you're dead? Is there a pose for that? Like downward a line and, pose, or I don't know. Down, yeah, downward, downward casket or something. Uh, but before I would call the police, I would look. I go, Are you sure? Yeah. You haven't moved yeah. in a few minutes. Are you sure? I know. Uh, you know, and kind of investigate a little bit of it, but. Hey, we wouldn't be talking about it if it didn't That is true. It all out. Mm -hmm. All right, but good for them. That at least they thought they saw something. See something, say something. Yeah, there you go. 29-year-old mm -hmm. beauty influencer, Carolina Geitz. She's been single for two years, grew tired of the romance rat race, so she decided to make a sign saying, quote, looking for a husband while walking around New York City to see if it would attract any interest. Well, she gets hit in the streets with her cardboard billboard, and after months of online dating failures, rather than give up hope, the wannabe bride decided to try and make a personal connection with the help of a higher power. The native of South Asia relocated to the U.S. in 2017, reeled in more than 8 million views, wow. featuring her husband, Hunt. Look at that. Okay. That guy taking her away. In the trending clip, she gets seen strutting around, waving her handwritten poster in the air, trusting that a dream lover, a handsome hunk with a beautiful soul, will miraculously appear. She claims it works. It took her just 30 minutes of parading the streets of New York before she met a man. No word right now of his identity. She says she's going to keep his details private. I wonder okay. if it's a guy that carried her Could away. Could Ben. You never know. It reminds me of Guy with a Sign. Have you seen that yes, guy on Yes, and he on changes social? it yeah. every day. And mm -hmm. now there's copycatters. Yeah. Copy. But what about the guy who, uh, uh, he put up a, his resume. He's like, uh, yes. And he got a job. And I'm like, look, if, if that's what it takes, yeah. to me, that's impressive. Like, you'll do whatever it takes to get a job. All for you, and the same goes for her. If she well, wants somebody, and I, somebody. I think this speaks volumes to meeting someone in person because she'd done all the online dating apps and had no success. So yeah. maybe there is something to be said for meeting somebody one on one. Well, you're, you're, you're putting your intentions out, yeah. well, and it'll be out there. Why, why not? Hey, we are going to take you and give you some life, love, shopping coming up with this yeah. lovely lady. All that's coming up right next. Let's do a little life love shopping. Plastic pink flamingos are the latest kitsch turn secret code for sexy playtime. Road tripper Nancy Dixon recently revealed the secret meaning behind pink lawn flamingos in a report for RV Travel. She says an RV neighbor told her about the true meaning behind the flamingos, code for swingers camp here. Did you guys hear me? Swingers get pink plastic flamingos. Well, earlier this year, the Miami Herald also confirmed that having one in your front lawn could also be a call to all those who are open to swing culture. Nancy says you can also add pineapples and loofahs to the list as a signal that you're into some sexy swapping. Who knew about the pink flamingos? Well, Shana Aldwick, she flips furniture and showcases her DIY projects on social media with the handle, The Flipped Piece. She's got a great Ikea hack for a workbench. Take a look. I turned two Ikea Calyx units into the workbench of my dreams, and let me show you how. I thrifted two of these Calyx units, so I first started by sanding and cleaning them, and then I went to the store and bought some brackets. 
I got some No More Nails and I used that to attach the two pieces together and also did the same thing with the brackets all throughout the piece to secure it and make sure that these two were stuck together and not coming apart anytime soon. Next, I traced the edge of a paint jar and I used my jigsaw to round off those sharp edges so I wouldn't poke myself. I then smoothed out the top and then the piece looked like this. Then I used Gator Hide. This is a very tough wearing top coat and I sealed the top of my unit with this so it would be really easy to work on and not scratch as much. Then I had some spare hooks and I attached them to the side to hang things on. After the piece was drying, I turned it on its side and I attached these snap lock legs, which meant that I could easily move this huge unit and I can lock them back in place when I wanted it to be sturdy again, like so. Such a cool idea. Well, you're driving home and you think, why not treat myself? Well, if this sounds like you, you're likely part of the treat culture. Inflation and out of control prices from everything from gas to groceries has many of us looking for the simple pleasures in life. Maybe it's a latte or a frozen lemonade. Could be a lipstick or a hand cream. You might even consider a cheesy reality show a little self-indulgence. Experts say treat culture has the same feel good vibes as retail therapy, but without the giant credit card hangover, if you know know what I mean. Well, candy fans received some surprising news when the true meaning of Twix was revealed. Have you heard about this? Well, Fuji on Twitter wanted to confirm the name was short for twin biscuit sticks. Mars, the maker of Twix, responded with close and then replied that the name is actually short for Twin Sticks. The two bars of caramel and shortbread covered in chocolate came to the U.S. in 1979. We're going to stick with the candy theme here. Candy fans on social media lost their collective minds when a chef known as At Chef Cootie posted a quick video on the proper way to eat Toblerone chocolate. Now, you're supposed to push the triangle inward, not bend it out. Believe it or not, his clip has racked up 50 million views. The Wear Blue campaign is coming up. Here's important information on that initiative. For over a decade, the U.S. Department of Homeland Security's Blue campaign has been committed to increasing awareness to help combat human trafficking. January 11th is National Human Trafficking Awareness Day, or Wear Blue Day. On this day, join Blue campaign in combating this crime by raising awareness. Wear blue, the international color of human trafficking awareness. Then take a photo and post it on social media using the hashtag WearBlueDay. Learn more at dhs.gov slash blue campaign. Very important information there. Now, again, if you want to find out any information on this or anything else that we've been talking about here on the show, it's very simple. All you have to do is go to our website. It's dailyflashshow.com. There you'll find full episodes of the show as well as that information and links to find out even more information. The website, dailyflashshow.com. It's furry friends time, and what better time than fall to get outdoors and have adventures with our pets. Dog lovers Jojo Fletcher and Jordan Rogers, reality TV stars from The Bachelorette, are teaming up with Purina Prime Treats to launch the Everyday Adventure Guide filled with tips for having fun with your canine companions. Welcome, Jojo and Jordan. Hey. hey. So, guys, why the Everyday Adventure Guide? Well, anybody that knows Jordan and I know that we are huge dog lovers. Obviously, we have two of our own, Jackson and Jagger. Um, and we're always looking day to day for just different dog friendly experiences that we can have with our own dogs. So we teamed up with Karina Prime Dog Treats and we put together this everyday adventure guide that's just sharing our own experiences, our daily activities that are pretty easy and attainable um, to hopefully empower and inspire other dog owners to infuse that same excitement and exploration into their dog's lives because we recognize just the bond that it creates when you do those, whether it's five minutes, 10 minutes, bigger activities uh, with your dogs. It's a strength, it's a bond strength. And they run our household. Yeah. So they forced us to do this. Of course, of course. What kind of. Kind of. So Jordan, why <laughs> is it important to plan quality time with the pets? And what are some of the benefits of spending time with them? Yeah, I think we created this everyday adventure guide, adventure guide with Prime to really educate that it doesn't matter how big or small the adventure. Yeah. I mean, it could be a walk around the neighborhood for five or 10 minutes, or it could be a, a trip to the PARK. And yes, I had to spell it because our dogs are in the vicinity. And if you're a dog owner, you realize there's certain trigger words and they'd be up in my lap right now if I 
said that one out loud. So no matter how big or small, um, it's really beneficial for not just your bond with your animal, but also their health benefits. Mm -hmm. So we have some uh, expert opinions in there from uh, one of Purina's veterinarians on some of the health benefits as well, but let alone, they just love us a lot more when we take them <laughs> yeah. uh, to and, those adventures. And where can, we, where can we go to get that information? Yes, you can go to Purina.com slash Prime Adventure. You can check out the whole adventure guide there. we got a lot of tips and tricks and places and And check out the dog treats, do. our favorite, dog's favorites. And the dog treats uh, that they absolutely love, a, a whole assortment of them. That's awesome. We'll have that on our website at dailyflashshow.com. Thank you guys both for being here. Appreciate it. Well, as we head towards the end of the year, it's a perfect time to reflect on the year that was and start to plan for the year ahead. Angie Hicks from Angie joins us with the top home improvement trends in tips on planning and budgeting for 2024. Today, we're going to talk about the Angie State of Home Spending Report. This report looks at what homeowners spent in 2023 on home improvements, which we found was about $13,000, which was an increase over last year. The types of projects homeowners were tackling in 23 included things like general maintenance, interior paintings, and then also bathroom remodeling. And when we look out into 2024, we're finding people looking to do some similar things, again, continuing to spend. They're looking to do a lot of maintenance again, as well as appliances. As you start to do your planning for 2024, it's good to do it this time of year. You want to get ahead of the busy season so you know what, so you can talk to contractors ahead of the spring rush. If you want more information on how to tackle your home projects for 2024, feel free to go to Angie.com, A-N-G-I.com, or download the Angie app where you can learn all about your projects, how much they're going to cost, and get connected to top pros. All right, let's jump into our parenthood. If your kids are picky eaters, chances are mealtimes can be really stressful. So here are some tips on how to avoid that mealtime madness is parenting expert, our favorite, Catherine Celery. Hi, Catherine. Hey, I'm so glad to be back. Nice we're, to see you. We're so glad to have you here. and so glad we're talking about this very um, appropriate uh, discussion because I, I, I think every family has at least one of them if you have multiples. Maybe even the one kid you have might be it. We're talking about picky eaters. You have three tips for parents of picky eaters, and I want to start off with the first one. No punishments or rewards. What does that mean? It means it's vital parents don't force their children to eat. Many parents feel it's necessary to say no dessert without your veggies. I think we've all heard that. Or right. you have to finish everything on your plate before you leave the table. And parents think that this is like a good thing to do. Their intentions are solid. But these statements are actually risky because we want their children to eat enough of the right types of foods. Everybody does. But this kind of dialogue can create a toxic relationship to food. Okay, well, kids are excellent at bargaining. And is this where we turn around and not bargain with them and or just say, all right, but there has to be some kind of consequence if they, they don't, right? Or am I wrong in that thinking? Yeah, I think there's maybe a tweak around that thinking. Okay. Because what we don't want to set up is an eating disorder. I mean, everything is really around that in that kids have a healthy self-concept and how to help parents right now is to guide them in those conversations. So let's talk about how to frame these conversations. Okay. So conversations with kids should be focused on healthy and balanced eating, staying active rather than around weight and obesity. And this is your second these tip, begin, right? But is, is yeah, right, this is tip okay. two. So these can begin as early as when children begin eating solid foods and feeding themselves. The focus should not be around weight and shouldn't be around looking a certain way because everybody's body is different. So rather it's important to teach children that food fuels their body for energy and that it's all about feeling well. Okay. Finally, you say about modeling and exposing. Um, now, I do that on the weekends, but we're talking about <laughs> dinner. <laughs> I'm sure it's a completely different thing, right? <laughs> Slightly different, but okay. all our kids are looking at us and they're learning from us. We are the, what we do is really how they, they learn. So at mealtimes, model healthy eating, balanced diet, They'll learn that by watching you. It's absolutely crucial. So because they learn this behavior from us, it's really important that we model it. In the same way, we demonstrate the importance of regular exercise by modeling that. Active lifestyles, equally important. Expose children to a variety of foods, meals, activities, sports. All of this is so important so that they can discover healthy habits on their own with some, you know, bandwidth around exploration 
but with you as a really solid model. And I think you might have told me this before in our, our discussions is why not have them involved in dinner? I would imagine if they're involved in dinner, they're going to be more apt to want to be able to eat it and they'll finish it, I would imagine, because it's their own creation. But what do you say it's, it, it, it's the, the starving children in China uh, syndrome, where as a parent, we're like, you know, we don't want to waste. I mean, how do we get around yeah. that? I mean, that, that, I'm sorry, that's going to be embedded. I, I know I had to finish my plate my whole life, and I think it, get, it, it led me to a weight problem, 100%. I felt like even when I go out, I go, I have to literally tell myself, I don't have to finish this. But what about that, that scenario that I just mentioned? I think it's so important. I think we all grew up with that. I did too. Yeah. And you're right. It does lead to eating disorders because what we want our children to do is eat until they're full. And that's basically you'd want to ask them that. You just say, do you feel full? And, and, and yeah, again, no punishment if they don't. Full. Okay. We want, you know, we just keep wanting kids to learn to touch into what's right for them. All right. So you can have one body type that's not full yet. You can have another body type that needs more. I mean, obviously, really big guy is going to need more. I had a son and we'd eat dinner. And then I'd say about 45 minutes later, he's like, so what's for dinner, mom? And you're like, what are you kidding me? <laughs> exactly. And we'll eat more and eat. Fuel. We love you having you on freeparentingbook.com for more details. Thank you, Catherine. Thanks. Welcome back to Daily Flash. It is the furious drama following the rise of a fictional 1960s Midwestern motorcycle club through the lives of its members. This is today's must-watch movie, The Bike Riders. I've been thinking, I can't run this club forever. I built this for nothing. This is our family. You and me, kid. From the beginning? Yes, please. I was a golden age bike rider. And I never felt so out of place in all my life. That's when I saw him for the first time. He took my breath away. I'm Benny. Five weeks later, I married him. I thought I could change him, you know? Not to be different, but to be, I don't know, like he's wild. Hey! I told you to take that jacket off. You'd have to kill me to get this jacket off. What about the bar? Find it down. The club got real big real fast. They started running drugs, gambling, prostitution. Is that what this club is now? I want you to quit writing. Don't ask that. Benny. I need you. You can't have him. If he wants to ride a bike, you ride a bike. Hey, you know, just, just think it over, you know. <laughs> Love period pieces like this, and that's such a cool time uh, in history in my, my mind as well. And uh, Michael Shannon, I love him. Uh, yeah, he's in it. Tom Hardy, I and love Tom him. Tom Hardy, I mean, yes. Oh, that. my goodness. That sounds like a fun one. It does. Right. It looks good, and I love the styling, the James Dean kind of era of 1965 with the yeah. slick back hair. We need some jeans. of that. Yeah. Kind of the look back. We need more of you tomorrow, yes. all right? Well, you join us. That does it for the show. Here's the folks that put all this together. Look at those we'll have more flash people. tomorrow.